Hello and welcome to this episode of Inside PTI. My name is Jason Webster. Thanks for joining us today. Today I thought we'd talk a little bit about some of the high management work we're doing in corn at the PTI farm in Pontiac, Illinois. You know, every year we put some high management corn trials together trying to figure out what can we do to corn to get it to reward us with high yielding crops. And this slide uh, that you see on the screen represents a summary of four hybrids that we used in all of our high management trials this past year in 2021 at the PTI farm and shows you our yields running from 331 bushel corn all the way up to 357 point nine bushel to the acre. And so the question is, is how do you get some of these yields? And then I guess the one thing on my mind is how do I get these yields even higher yet? It's kind of what we're working on here at the farm. And to get these yields, the 330 to 357, here's what we did last year. This, this was our recipe card, if you will, for our high management program. And one of the things I've learned in the, what will be my 36 years of farming here in 2022 is a uh, high yielding you know, corn program doesn't exist of a one and done nutrition program. We have to continue to feed the crop a little bit at a time. It's just like us as human beings, we normally eat at least three times a day. We wake up in the morning, we eat breakfast, we get to lunchtime, we're hungry again and so we eat again. And then lastly, we get to supper time and we eat one more time. And so that mentality kind of sticks in my brain a little bit about how we feed corn throughout the growing season. It's just a little bit at a time, not over applying, over spending, just a little bit at a time to keep the crop healthy. And I always tell folks, you know, I don't know what the right things are. I don't know, you know, we're trying to figure out what the wrong things are, but what you see on the screen right now is what we did. We're open and honest and we just tell folks, here's what we did this past year in our high management trial. The only thing not on this, this recipe card is my dry fertilizer. We are a strip till program here at the PTI farm. I am putting DAP and potash in the bottom of my strips. It's the only thing not on this, this, this screen you're seeing right now. But let's go through some of these. You know, we've got at plant nutrition. You know, I mentioned earlier, it's not a one and done. So when we come out and plant, we, got, we have a starter fertilizer program. We're looking at FurrowJet Center applications, FurrowJet Wing, and then Conceal. It's kind of a relay program. Um, and that, that's going on in the plant, or we let the crop come up out of the ground and we continue to feed. We've got a side dress program, and then it turns into foliar nutrition. And the foliar nutrition is not a one and done program either. It's designed to continue going through the growing season so that we can finish strong. Did we finish strong last year in 2021? Well, I think we did. I mean, we had yield gains of 91.3 bushel over our standard status quo uh, corn here at the farm. And probably the more important thing about that aspect is we increased net income by $203.30 of the acre. That I really like because I get the question all the time here at the PTI farm. Okay, Jason, you're trying to grow high yielding corn, but you're, you're spending all this money on all these other crop inputs and the application. Are you making any more money than trying to grow 200 or 225 bushel regular corn? And that's a great question. That's a legitimate question, but I will tell you, this 91.3 bushel yield increase, the $203.30 additional net economic gains from last year was the highest economic gains we saw on the whole PTI farm in 2021. It was number one. I made the most money from my high management corn program here at the PTI farm in 2021. What's, a, what's our goal for corn? I guess right now we're growing 360 bushel corn. So if we're planting corn at 36,000 populations, I'm 36 times 10. So 10 times my seeding rate is my goal currently. Now, hopefully this will continue to, to go up, but right now that's where I'm at. This year I fell just short of that. Our, our best hybrid, that Golden Harvest 15J91, came in at 9.75. Again, you know, we're looking at our population or our seeding rate times 10, 36 times 10. Nutrient management, this is a big one. I showed you my recipe card that showed a lot of the nutrient, but it starts off in the fall with our dry, um, dry fertilizer program in our strip till. Okay, it's just high concentrated bands of fertilizer in the bottom of the strip. And then I bring a planter out in the spring with additional starter fertilizer, and I continue feeding this, this crop. You may look at this picture and say, yep, Jason, that's a planter. Yeah, it is, but do you also know it's a fertilizer applicator for us? This is how we set the foundation, build the foundation early to get corn 
just healthy as can be up until V5, because we know that's the first yield determination we make with ear girth. Okay, so we're going to set that foundation with our dry program in the fall and our liquid package on the planter. This is the liquid package on the, on the planter. It's a, it's a five point touch is what we call it. We start in the center of the furrow. I've got one tank and pump on the planter that can apply products like sugars, biologicals, um, right on the seed in between the seed. Then I have another tank and pump on the planter that can relay out three quarters of an inch away from the seed in the furrow. We call that furrow jet wings. And then, I've, then I relay one more time in conceal. I've got knives in the gauge wheels of the planter, a dual band placement of products like nitrogen, potassium, sulfur, and boron, some high horsepower products. But this is how we're designing the foundational program to get us up until V5 when we set ear girth. This is the five point touch, those orange bands, those three bands in furrow, and then the two outside bands, that's my conceal. This is the five point touch, just a little bit of fertilizer in different places to continue feeding the root structure of that plant. Tile drainage, tile, tile drainage is another huge component of what we're trying to do in growing high yield corn. We've got to give our soils oxygen. You, we can put on all the fertilizer we want that we just talked about earlier, but if we don't have any oxygen in the soil, we're not going to be able to raise high yielding crops. Just like you folks at home, if you would jump in a pool, dive all the way down to the bottom of the pool and stay there for 10 minutes, 20 minutes if you will, how are you going to feel? Not very good. It's the same as what our corn feels when we have saturated soils during the growing season. We, we need tile drainage to get that excess water away. And do you know that tile drainage by itself came in at number four of our top 10 things that made us the most money? 15 foot, 30 foot, 60 foot tile. Averaging them all together is bringing in almost another $160 an acre. So it's crucial to get tile drainage um, situated on the farm. This is a picture of, of some of the work we're doing with, with uh, drainage tile. I have a farm here at PTI that, is, that, is, that has tremendously wet soils. The reason for that is there was never an outlet for water to go, so the previous tenants on this farm couldn't put tile in. There was just nowhere for that water to go. We have started to put tile in on this farm, and, and look at the gains on this. 60-foot tile, multi-year, bringing in almost 32 bushel yield gains. We go, we cut that 60-foot tile in half, and we go to 30-foot tile, and I'm looking at uh, 38 bushel yield gains. Just tremendous yield gains from putting tile in the ground. <laughs> Some farmers that have come to the PTI farm said, well, Jason, you don't need tile. You're, you're growing 275 uh, bushel corn here, and it's, it's under irrigation, so it should be a, a high yield number. But look, even in this high yield situation, I go from having no tile, growing 275 bushel corn, to putting tile in at 60 foot centers. Now all of a sudden my yield goes up 20 bushel to 294 bushel corn. I cut the 60 foot tile in half and I go to 30 foot pattern tile and all of a sudden I break the 300 bushel barrier. I'm sitting at 309 bushel to the acre. We cut our 30 foot tile in half, we go to 15 foot pattern tile and now I'm up over 316 bushel to the acre. We had a wet year in 2021. I had to get water away for the soils to breathe, to get oxygen. And it was a, it was a major money maker for us where we had the tile. I'm also trying to get tile to do something else for me. I know a lot of folks say, well, it costs a lot of money to put tile in. Yes, it does. I do think it returns itself um, rather quickly. But Due to the fact that it is a large cash outlay, we're trying to get the tile to do one more thing other than just get water away. We have these structures here at the farm, gate structures, where I can backfeed water into the tile and I can control the level of the water table. I don't know exactly how to do this yet. We're, we're working through this and seeing if it's possible. But get this, we have gates on, on our tile that I can shut the gates off and not let any water out. And so I can keep water in the tile during the summer to feed the crop. It's kind of a tricky little situation, um, but you can do it. I can set it up where I can close the gates off and pump water back in to backfill water to sub-irrigate. Now this is, is an even trickier situation because what I'm doing is I'm putting tile in the ground and filling the tile up with water and asking the soil to pull that water up to feed the crop. That's done by soils, you know, the soil's ability to do capillary movement. 
capillary action of the soil. Some soils are better than others. I'm still trying to understand on this PTI farm how much capillary action our soils can do. And so what we're doing is we're putting 15 foot pattern tile in compared to 30 foot pattern tile and just trying to watch and understand how much water can we move up through the soil profile. I'm doing 15 foot and 30 foot pattern tile so in the summer maybe I see this wave of the crop and it's going to indicate that I just can't move water that far. It's one of the things that again I don't know how to do this. We're trying to understand this as we as we move on year after year here at the PTI farm. Now the tile. When I put tile in, I mentioned earlier, I never had an outlet for the water to go. I do have an outlet now. We made it. We created it ourselves. We created this water recycling system. I built a reservoir here at the farm. Now I can put tile in. Okay, I can go to the areas of the farm that are wet. I can put tile in and all of these laterals are going to be hooked up to a main that dumps into the reservoir of the pond and then I hold it for dear life. I don't get rid of it. I don't send it to the river system. I don't do that. I keep it here at the farm because I'm going to recycle that rainwater that went through that tile. Here you can see some of our initial tiling at the farm. We were looking at 30 foot, 60 foot, and a 120 foot pattern tile, but all these laterals are feeding back into this reservoir to deposit all of that rainwater. Then we recycle that rainwater. We're pumping the water out through Netafim drip tape. This has been tremendous working with the folks at Netafim and the folks at NutriDrip are, are, is the design and installation team. And they've been crucial to work with for us to figure out how do we do this system? How do we put water in the form of irrigation to our crop? But more importantly, how do we fertigate the crop as well? It's just been, been really interesting watching all this happen here at the PTI farm. So we've got the reservoir, we've got that body of water. Again, that's all rainwater, and we're simply pumping that water back out and putting it in drip tape. Some of the drip tape, the Netafim drip tape, is on top of the ground. We do this, so when you come to the farm in the summertime uh, for one of our field days, you can see the design and see the tape and see how it works, but we also have drip tape in the farm that's buried, uh, like the system ought to be, uh, su uh, subsurface uh, drip irrigation. And so we've got both that we're, we're, we're working at here at the farm, but both gives us the ability to put water to the crop and put fertilizer to the crop as well. Look at my multi-year irrigation fertigation response from our Netafim drip tape. We started in 2019. We finished the, the irrigation project right at tassel time. Still saw 40, 42 bushel yield gains. The next year when the system was ready to go full bore, look at that. We were bringing in an extra 105 bushel of corn from the irrigation and fertigation system. This past year in 2021, a 73 bushel response, a little bit lower than 2020, but I would, I would, would say that our corn yield in general in this area was higher than normal. And when that happens, your irrigation response would go down just a bit. But these are great numbers that we're working with, great responses to being able to irrigate and fertigate, fertigate our crops. It's taking some of the variables out of farming. I put tile in to get water away when my soils are too wet. And then when I'm too dry, I'm bringing water back in and I can put fertilizer with it. We're taking control and we're getting higher yields as a result of it. Look at what the corn looks like. The corn on the right, look how green and healthy it is. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want my corn to die during the growing season. I want it to stay alive. I want it to stay healthy. The corn on the left is corn that, that died and dried, if you will. This was a program where we couldn't control water. We couldn't control a high management program here because we didn't have the ability to do it. And look what happened, the corn died and dried. We're trying to keep this corn healthy so it can reward us with high kernel weight. Give us those large kernels that weigh like lead. If my corn dies prematurely, I can't get this increased kernel weight. So today's Inside PTI Agronomy Tip of the Day is High yield corn takes a lot of management. I'll be the first to say that. But there are so many crop stress variables that can occur in the season. And it's all about taking control and what stresses can you eliminate. For us, some of the big ones is water. Okay, when we're too wet, we want to get rid of that water. We don't you know, give that water away. We keep it so we can recycle it and then irrigate it during the growing season. And it's just a huge advantage for us. Half the battle though to, to, to growing high yielding corn is just knowing what it wants. And I always say that, can we listen to the crop and figure out what can we give this crop so it can reward us with more bushels. But in order to do this, 
we need to crop scout. I, I've said this for a long time. I think crop scouting is the, 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 the number one problem we have in the ag industry because nobody wants to do it and we don't do it. And we need to do this to figure out what is going on in the field. And if we know that, then we can do some things to, to increase yield accordingly. Try new things on your farm. You know, I know you're doing things on your farm because you think they're right, but just try to think outside the box a little bit, do something different and see if it beats the program that you're implementing on your farm. And lastly, remember the basics. You know, when we go to plant this spring, think about what you can do to get that planter to dance for you. You know, think about the little things, the planter maintenance, getting that, that perfect singulation, the downforce, close that trench properly. Do the little things right and it can add up to be awfully large for you in the end. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Inside PTI. If you got any questions, reach out to any Precision Planning Premier dealer. They've got all the data that we've talked about today. We've got our 2021 yield summary book. All of our dealers have access to this. If you'd like a copy or some information from the book, reach out to them. They'd, they'd sure be happy to help you with it. If you have questions, you can also email us at InsidePTI at PrecisionPlanning.com. That's all the time we have for today. We will see you on the next episode of Inside PTI. Thanks so much for watching.